Today's menu, the fushren sauce. I've always known to be a great chef, and today I'll be cooking fushren. Now we all know fushren is a preservation character, and her main job is to protect your whole team. That's boring as f Today we are going to attempt the impossible, soloing all MOC with a single gun. I'll be able to only use Fushun at E0. Signature light cone is allowed, but only at S1. I have to beat one of two stages in MOC since I can't use her on both sides. And finally, win at all costs. Recycle me cool. In order to make this work, we need Fushun to survive. Hence, some health here. We also need her to do damage, therefore the crit stats. The first bit of obstacle here is to make her do enough damage, since you know, she's a preservation character. I opted for Rutilin and Longevous Disciple as the sets, both of which gains her crit rate. That should bring us enough crit rate to consistently get her to do the highest damage possible. And then it started. Original the idea here is simple. Fushun has a heal mechanic on her ulti. That will be her main source of sustain. She also has damage reduction to help her live and the biggest factor of all that turns Fushren into Fudashren with a big cock, it's that she has damage. Preservation, by the way. With an LT doing that much damage and these trotters channeling their inner creeper, we're able to easily destroy MOC1. Every time I got even a resemblance to low health, we activate our healing and instantly go back to almost full. This is pretty much repeated for MOC2 and 3 as well, and at this point, I can say it. This 4 foot 5 gremlin is a dang destroyer destruction character did. Of course, we are pretty much over level for these two stages, so consider what you just seen a prequel. This next enemy though, is our first challenge, a blur rock. If you're unaware, these guys can freeze you, and when you're attempting a solo run, getting frozen isn't like imprisonment where I can shake it up on one turn. I essentially skip the turn instead. And usually when it happens one time, a solo character will just die. But thankfully, freeze is considered as a crowd control diva. And guess what Fushan has? A gosh dang CC immunity for every matrix she activates. And this is what happens when you have 50 F res anyway, and you're Fushan. <laughs> As I rub her picture, I realized, wait, I can't auto this crud. So I decided to make MOC5 my first footstool. With the ultimate disrespect, the auto solo. But we are facing Jappa the HUD. You'd think she's submissive and breedable looking at her, but her skills are nowhere near wholesome. The problematic part of her kit is this, the max health reduction. This cutty has her whole kit skilled on max health. It's the same for her heal and her damage too. With all that said, this Jappa enemy is a direct counter to Fushren's entire existence, which is surprising to me because usually Hoyoverse would make the MOC extremely advantages for the batter character on the weak. I guess not here. To counter this, we will probably have to use some complex math that involves damage reduction and defense in order to- Or we can just use brute force! And yes, we kinda just autoed it anyway, and it ain't me, but AI is targeting the Trotter to do damage that way, man. What a gosh dang loser. We did defeat Jappa the Hutt's fat ass, and moved on to fight the other fat ass. This is the fight where things truly got harder. I was taking more damage. The enemies take longer to defeat and these blue Power Rangers from Wish kept annoying me with a pushback. But as they kept pushing me back, I have ER rope as well, so I could've just got a bunch of energy and spammed my LT until they all died. I didn't even like take too many turns, I just kept getting pushing out of my turn. And just with that, we are gaining more ults than they are able to push me back. Considering each ult is a full heal, we beat them in a the game of attrition. <laughs> Let's just say these two stages were as difficult as playing Genshin Impact. So no, it's easy as f The main reason behind that is our pink little small head mainly only struggle against crowd control and certain debuffs like from the Jabba girl. MOC6 sees us fighting Red Rock and Asta in disguise. All they do is direct damage or some wind shear and burn, which all in all doesn't really stop me from moving. And not only that, by all that's holy, Hoiverse gave this rock the biggest nerf of all time, which is where the energy that he gives me on his ulti is just so much. That pretty much means more ults for Fushu and you've already seen how much damage you can do, but truth be told, the Trotters aren't dealing more damage at this point. I did not want to rely on the Trotters that much, but I'll just spoil the ending. Without them, this challenge is impossible, which is why you want to try this with Fushan just as a flex, dude. If they never bring this Trotter back in the future, you might never be the solo with her, man. Who knows? But as usual, I lived, I tanked, I healed, I killed some Trotters, and they died. And it is the same exact thing for MOC7. If anything, my health didn't even go down that much here, since these two bosses are absolute scrubs. So much so they died to a kiss smaller than 
half their leg. Like, I did this with Blade. I get that, right? It's a full grown adult. Why are you gonna die to a pink kid killing trotters on auto, man? Do better, dude. Ha! Huh, what can even stop me at this fall? Oh, no. If you've seen my Blade solo before, you know that the moment you get controlled, it's usually game over. So you'd expect our run to be done. There's no way I'm gonna be able to, like, get around this. As Fushan gets enveloped by yellow goo. But no, this is something even Blake couldn't do. Survive the imprisonment. And oh yeah, I am not tall enough to ride a roller coaster character can. And it is at this point that I reveal to you the key tactic to making this whole run work. Timing her skill. Fushin's skill activates the matrix, and her traits allows her to gain a CC immunity for every time she does it. So all we need is simply time her E before the boss does a CC move, and we're safe. But if the enemy can do it constantly, or if there's multiple enemies that can do it, you'll still have to rely on your F-Res, or if you're Fushin, you can actually straight up out-tank it and heal. That's kind of what happened here. I did get imprisoned, but I kind of just tanked it and healed it. And with absolute uncouth brute force, we beat the first Fushin in prisoner, but the final way to seize is fighting that that same enemy and Stone Cold at the side. Both has crowd control. But Fushan's got a big pee pee. We are fighting Kafka, and gosh dang, we are not intimidating at all, it is crazy. Surprisingly enough, our one build is able to carry things out till now, but things are about to get impossible. We are fighting Groot first, and we all know Groot can heal. This immediately means we could get permanently stalled by the constant full heal since we won't beat the mobs fast enough to stop his heal. But somehow, we didn't even need to. I wasn't quick enough to beat the mobs and the Groot decided to do this. Yep, he can't spawn his minions if there are still some of them on the field, or perhaps it's just this trotter that took the final enemy slot here and prevented him from spotting. The weird thing is, after this quote up here, Groot just didn't attempt to summon his minions anymore at all. If he doesn't summon his minions, he'll never gain his healing field thingy. And yeah, I was weirded out. I don't think this is how it's supposed to work, because I definitely did get stalled out by him with my blade solo attempt. But well, let's just say I outsmarted Holy Reverse, and we get the win! But that is just the piece before the story. And then came Kafka. <laughs> But I was never one to give up. After carefully calculating the debuff to repercussion dynamic and plotting the quantum computing graph for element of nuances, we need more FRS. So I went ahead and swapped out the Rudolin Arena set for the Broken Kill set with the same exact main stats. That got me to 61.4% FRS. We're running it back, baby. Wife and kids. And boom, we cleared it. And we actually got the final star that I didn't even have before with a single pink gremlin, dude. And I also just realized, had I just timed my skill better, so I'm immune to Kafka CC, I probably didn't even need to switch my build at all. <laughs> Okay, we're not fighting that. This stage sees us fighting the one that chops her max health or the one that debuffs as much as Kafka does. Except there's also two of them now. So yeah, I can't even guarantee survival with my CC immunity if I'm fighting those horses. Seeing that I already have like 60 F res, I think there is a good chance I can resist the Jappa's health debuff. But the reality is always harsh. I couldn't do it. I just can't keep myself alive.
And that is how you cook the perfect fusion sauce. Yo, I hope you guys enjoyed my cooking of fushan. Yes. Also, clearly I'm trying a different style. I tried this a little bit before, you know, putting my face in. Most of you said that's cool. So, you know, I'm gonna I'm try and do this more. Of course, again, with this one, let me know what you think. And if you enjoy challenges like these where I just do some random shit, check out the favorites in the end screen that will appear in about now. And yes, take care.